Well, that's what I'm gonna give me. I'm gonna give you some tips to how do you handle when you get laid off or fired, right? So uh, the first thing you should do is stay calm. You know, I I, I get it, man. I, I done lost a, a couple jobs, six-figure jobs. You know, you, you get to the car, you just start punching the steering wheel. <laughs> you swinging at the air. You, you mad. You know, it's 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 an overwhelming feeling. You don't know what you're going to do. It's, it's real uncertain at that time. But uh, the, the first thing first, you just got to, you got to, Keep calm. You got to keep your composure because, you know, acting out of stress or or, or or reaction from the stress, just going to crash out, that's not that's not what to do. You know, it, you, you'll be caught up in the moment. If you got to cry, cry. You know, if you if you got to punch the wall, punch the wall. <laughs> Get it fixed. Just make sure you ain't in no rental or none of that. But if, if, if do what you got to do, but you got to stay calm, man. Because, like I said, it's not worth crashing out. Yeah, I get it. You know, sometimes you could have been with the company six, eight, nine years. You know, put in some hard work, climbed up the ladder, and then they just just cut you off. But, uh, like I said, step one, remain calm, you know. Um, number two, if you're getting laid off, you know, the company's downsizing, you should ask about a severance package. A severance package. A lot of times, if a company's doing mass layoffs, you know, if you're you're in a white collar job, blue collar don't really get that type of luxury. They just tell you to figure it out. But if you're in a white collar side, you, you know, ask if there's a severance package. Sometimes they'll give you six months to a year of your salary, so that way it softens the blow and gives you a little cushion <laughs> from from the ass kicking that it just gave you. All right. Um, but if they don't have a severance package, you should immediately go home and file for unemployment. It's just, uh, they don't give you much, but every little bit helps in this situation, you know, because at the end of the day, you really don't know how long you're going to be out of work for. And that's another thing about the uncertainty. You know, that's another thing why you have to remain calm because crashing out is just going to make your situation worse, right? The next thing you have to do is assess your financial situation, right? What are your bills looking like? Uh, it, are you, was you living paycheck to paycheck? That, this is, it's going to be real difficult. If you were living paycheck to paycheck, but I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna get you through this, all right? Because you, we know it's tough, right? So what you should do? Hopefully, hopefully you wasn't dipping into your 401k, right? Now is the time you should heavily rely on your 401k. What you should do is immediately request for a hardship loan from your 401k. Get as much as you can from your 401k. Uh, what that is going to help you do is. Don't get more than what you need, but get enough, right? Because you want to be able to roll your 401k over to your next employer, right? So you get, what you should do is add up all your expenses, right? Add them all up. Six months. Get all of your expenses for six months. And then you're going to do a hardship loan request from your 401k, right? And you're going to go 15% more than the number that you needed for the six months of your expenses, right? So you're going to take that money. Once you get it, you're going to pay everything up for the six months. You're going to need it. You are going to need it. It is going to take a big burden off of your, off of your chest, right? So once you got all of that paid up, all right, and... You are, um, you got all that set you situated and took care of. Next thing you got to do is update your resume. You have to update your resume. Now is the time where companies are laying off like crazy. So the competition is fierce. So you need to get on your WordPress. I mean, not WordPress, but in your Word office and update your resume get it tip top right and uh here's what you do right don't 
put that you're le- that you have left your job. <laughs> Do not put that you were laid off. You keep that open field for the date that you are still currently employed with the place that you just got laid off. You do not put that on there, all right? Uh, Once you have that updated, make sure you share it with somebody. Make sure you have somebody look over your resume. That's, That's huge, right? Because if they spot something that you just, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't catch everything, you know? So a second set of eyes is very, very, crucial and clutch because you know they can see something that you didn't a grammatical error didn't put your punctuations right it's not formatted right it just you got too many run-on sentences you share it with somebody give that way you can get feedback from somebody else because you don't want to be sending out there sending out a bs product to people and they're like man this guy can't even spell you know his punctuation is terrible i can't understand this this sentence was a paragraph long (laughs) a paragraph a paragraph long sentence is crazy but no that's why you have somebody proofread your resume right you got to reach out you know reach out to your friends reach out to some of your relatives like hey you know it, it where are you working? Are they hiring? Are they looking for the particular position that you do? You know, you reach out. A lot of the good jobs that I've gotten was through acquaintances of mine, you know? And, and that's another thing. You should be running around with people that make them roughly. You should be hanging with people that make more than you. But worst case scenario, you need to be with people that's making the, amount, the same amount that you're making, right? Because here's what happens. You lose your job and your your brother or your friend work at company C and they're like, hey, you know, um, we got that position open over here. So put your resume in. I can see if I can get HR to pull it for you and get you in for an interview. So that's why you got to reach out to the people that's in your circle. Right. Reach out to the people that's that's your friends, family. You know, you, you got to put yourself out there because now, like I said, the to- the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. One thing you'll see when you're laid off, the months go by real quick. The months go by so quick. So the next thing that you do, if you get laid off or fired, right? The next thing you do, you got to explore new opportunities. You have to explore new opportunities. You got the time. You're not bogged down by a nine to five. So if it was something that you wanted to start like a hobby or something like, you know, you wanted to build custom tables or you, you, you're an artist, you wanted to start paying, start, start doing it, start to see if you can make money on the side while you're looking for a job because looking for a job is a job, right? You really have to treat it as a job when you're looking for a new job, especially if you were making, if you were a high earner. Because high earner jobs are really difficult to find, you know, so you you have to be on your A game. I'm talking Monday through Friday, you getting up at nine o'clock and you filling out and you filling out applications. You got to go on a company website. It sucks. It really sucks putting yourself out here to work for somebody to make somebody else's dream come true. But this is what you have to do to survive but you know if you got that entrepreneurial spirit and you want to learn how to branch off make sure you subscribe because i give you valuable tips to help you gain the life that you want to achieve you know what i'm saying it's it's not hard well i take that back it is going to take a lot of hard work sometimes it's going to take some some long days and short nights you know to to accomplish your dream but when you get there Hell, a lot of times the journey getting there is the best part too. But back to the back to the subject at hand, right? All right. So the next thing, uh, oh yeah. So you gotta explore new opportunities. If it's a hobby that you wanted to take up and potentially make income, do it. You know, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes you know you got ousted from that job. And maybe it was the universe telling you, like, hey, you was a little bit too comfortable and you could be doing way better than what you're doing right now. It might suck that you're going through it, but a lot of times it could be a blessing in disguise, right? So, you know, it could be 
a urge to get you to pursue that dream that you always wanted to pursue. You know, everything happens for a reason, right? So, but in the meantime, too, you do that. And then you also do some gig work. Do Uber, do Lyft, do DoorDash, Instacart, Uber Eats, do whatever you got to do. Because like I said, the six months that you didn't pay all your bills up, it's going to go really fast. It's going to go really fast. So if you can start shipping away at the month seven, month eight, month nine, it's going to help you out. So it's not going to be, oh, shit, what do I got to do? My rent's due. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no job. I'm waiting on uh, unemployment to come through. I'm waiting on X amount. Of, you know, you don't want to be in that situation, right? You you want to set yourself up to land on the pillow instead of landing on a rock. All right. So the next one we have on this list is invest in self development. Right. Now is the time. You have a lot more free time on your hands. So make yourself a more qualified candidate. You know, if you're if you're into programming, learn a new language, learn Python. You know, or if uh, if you do uh, accounting, you know, learn commercial accounting, learn uh, accounting for veterinarians. You know, develop a skill that's gonna make you more of a marketable uh, candidate. Because, like I said. Companies are laying off like crazy. They are slashing employees, trimming the fat, right? So you got a lot of competition out here. So the better you look on paper, the better you will appear on the desk of an HR or a hiring personnel. So that's why you have to keep honing your skills. And when you do get like a new certification, put it on your resume instantly, right? All right, so the next one we got here, take care of your well-being. You know, it, like I said, it's stressful. You was just thrown in into the deep end, and you ain't know how to swim. So now you got to figure it out. Well, let me be your life jacket. Let me give you these tools to help you through this tough situation, right? Check on your mental health, man. You know, it, it's it's if you've done the stuff that I just previously mentioned, you're going to be in a whole better place, right? You're going to be in a whole better place. Even if you didn't have a 401k, if you immediately updated your resume and you got out here, start doing gig work, Instacart, Uber Eats, uh, Uber Lyft, all of that stuff, you find which ones that pay the most on, on the best days. Like you could do Lyft during Monday through Friday, doing nine to five. So you can take all the people to work. You could do Uber Eats after the work hours to get people. And then you could do Lyft again on the weekends at night to take people back and forth for the bars, right? So you got to maximize your earning potential when you don't have no funds coming in. Because like I said, you don't know how long you're going to be without a job. So that's why you got to get on it ASAP. You know, you cannot wait because like I said, the time hits fast forward <laughs> the moment you step foot away from that job right so we're gonna move on to the next one uh you gotta stay persistent like i said looking for a job is a job and you have to treat it as such so uh you can't get upset that man i done put i done sent out a hundred resumes today and nothing i done went and spent five hours each day this week Going on different companies' careers, signing up for their portals, filling out their questionnaires. I did all of this and still nothing. It's tough. It's tough. You know? So that's why I say you got to keep it persistent. You know, persistence is going to pay out because, you know, if you did 99 applications, that, that 101 could get you in the interview spot, right? And so. Now that you've been persistent, you make a headway. You know, if you've done everything up to this point, this this little period, you can almost treat it once you secure another job and you set your start date a month out, you can take a break. You can take a breather because now you got to set up to where, you know, my rent's paid. I got some money in the bank, so it's not so stressful, you know. I, I just mainly had to find a job. Now I found the job, right? So now we're going to move on. Um, but if it do get tough, 
Don't be afraid to get professional help. You know, get counseling. Seek therapy. You got the time. You know, a lot of times when you go through stuff, past trauma seem to creep up when you're going through the stuff. And it, it, it just it just piles you down, you know. And sometimes you need somebody to talk to. If you don't have a, a tight circle that you could trust or a shoulder that you can, you know, reach out for help. You know, never be afraid to get professional help because sometimes you just need to unpack. You know, that's real. It's a lot to unpack, especially when you get fired or laid off. It came out of nowhere. You know, uh, I seen the chick. She had got a job. She relocated, worked for them for four months, and they laid her off. She was like, wow, I just uprooted my life, moved all the way halfway across the country to work for y'all. Y'all painted a picture like it's hunky-dory, and then now y'all laying me off? It's crazy, so you got to be prepared. That's why you got to make sure your 401k is topped off. You always got to contribute the maximum amount to your 401k that you can, right? Because you don't know if situations like this is going to rise, right? My 401k was my saving grace a lot of times, you know, because these companies ain't going to tell you they about to lay you off. Sometimes you could get a vibe. Sometimes they'll send out a mass email like, hey, you know, we got, we got to make cuts. You know, we're going to be, it's going to be some restructuring. And if you see a restructuring email, you need to start getting ready. You already know what's about to come down the pipeline. You know, that's, that's one of them days. Like I said, you walk in the office and the vibe off, everybody looking at you, they know what's about to happen. Dave about to get fired. Dave out of here. And they looking at Dave, take that walk of shame. Damn, Dave, it was nice knowing you. Good luck, Dave. <laughs> Man, I've I been Dave. Some of y'all been Dave too, but if you Dave right now, make sure you follow these tips. All right, <laughs> uh, keep a journal of all the jobs that you've applied for, um, because you don't want to reapply. It, it, you have to become a machine. You see your job open and pop up, you apply for it instantly, boom. But you want to keep a record because sometimes you you could be reapplying for a job and it'll end up hurting you in the long run. So you don't want to. Uh, double apply for a job so make sure you journal all of the places that you didn't apply so if you didn't hit it already you cross it off so that way you're not wasting your time reapplying for some of these places <clears throat> next one is you got to prepare for interviews right now it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough like the interview process is real real crazy but if you watch my channel and and, and you subscribe and you actually watch the videos. I, I teach you body language. And you can ace an interview real quick. Just buy off your body language. <laughs> you have to learn how to sell yourself. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a series, part of the high value man series, just specifically on sales. Even if you don't do sales, you still gotta learn these because you're always selling yourself. At the end of the day, when you meet somebody, you have to sell yourself to them, whether you know it or not, right? So in the interview process, you know, you have to go in there confident, practice these questions. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to, matter of fact, so it, if you watch my channel and you have did all of the body language tactics that I showed you and, you know, built rapport with your interviewers and stuff at the end of the interview, when they have, a, they, when they ask you, do you have any questions for us? Right. This is the secret weapon, right? This is the secret weapon to find out how you did in the interview process, right? So when they ask you, do you have any questions for us? You ask them, say, hey, was there anything that you seen in this interview that would make me not a good fit for this position at your company? Ooh, this question right here, right, is so powerful. So what it does is when you ask that question, you can gauge how well you did in the interview because they're going to say, hey, well, no, we think you're actually amazing and you're a good fit for this role. Or they'll come back with you and say, hey, we did notice that, you know, when we asked you how you were with uh, handling team environments, you didn't really elaborate on how well you work with others. Then it gives you that chance to rebuttal 
and solidify yourself as a candidate in the interview process. Oh, make sure you hit the like, man. Come on, man. Come on. I just gave y'all a crazy gem, right? That question will get you. Just hit the like for me. If you go, if you do an interview at the interview, when they ask you, you ask that and then they tell you and you get hired. I want you to come back and drop it down in the comments. For real, for real. I'm going to make sure I'm going to respond to as many comments as I can. I'm going to respond to them all, all right? I'm going to respond to them all. I'm a small channel, so it's no excuse. So drop down. If you have any questions, any comments, you know, like I said, if that if that question works for you, drop it in the comments. Make sure you leave a like for me, all right? All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on. You prepare yourself for your interviews. You make sure you got some good you got your good suit. Always wear a suit. You will be surprised how many people don't show up to interviews in suits. Even for corporate jobs nowadays, they come business casual. Wear a suit. Overdress for the occasion. Make sure when you come in your interview, right, you have a folder with your resume in it. Don't just hand your resume to the interviewer in a, as a single sheet of paper. That's tacky. You go to Home uh, Office Depot. And they have these professional envelopes just for resumes. And you slide your resume in there. It's like $10 for a pack of like 15 or something. I haven't bought them in a long time because I'm a business owner. I don't interview for shit no more. Um, but if you watch this channel and you want to be a business owner, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to give you the gems, right? But you have an envelope just for resumes, right? You go in there and you slide your resume to whoever's in there you make sure you take enough resumes for however many people you feel that you're going to interview i suggest five or more and you have them ready so the moment you come in there you shake the hand with a strong firm handshake look them in the eyes stand straight up square and smile and introduce yourself and after you shake your hands with them you give them your resume look them in the eye as you give it to them it's going to make a powerful impact it's a lasting impact so it's more psychological anything because what it is is it's 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 like a law for giving. It's when you give somebody something, they feel the need to have to return it to you. So if you give them with a parting gift, they will feel the need to have to reciprocate that. So if you slide them a really nice polished resume in a folder, you go and, and you show up with a suit. You you do all of the body language information that I teach you. You're going to get the job. You're going to get the job, right? So we're going to move on, right? We're going to move on because I know y'all want to know how to get this half million dollar line of credit. I know y'all want to. So we're going to speed through this one, all right? So the last one on this list, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself and you have to stay motivated. Like I said, looking for a job is a job. It's going to take everything that you got. It's going to take everything you got. But when you get that call saying that you got it and the pay is where you want it, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, make sure you come back and like these videos. Matter of fact, like them now for me, right? Make sure you drop a comment down. If I dropped any gem on you this evening, any gem that you feel that's going to help you out in this situation, let me know, man. I want to hear. I, I don't know if this is helping y'all out until y'all let me know in the comments, all right? So with that said, that's it, man. That's what to do when you get laid off. All right, we're going to move on to the next one, right? 